Good morning. Oh, I think we could do a little bit better than that. Good morning. Good morning. I know there was a, there was a very calm uh, prelude this morning, so I want to make sure you're uh, you're up, you're awake, and uh, welcome you to Back to Church Sunday. This is a movement across the nation, across the world, trying to encourage churches to kind of collectively. Uh, bring hope to those who are in need of hope, bring people back to church, to those who have uh, gone away, and um, really keep a message of hope alive in the hearts. So I hope that you feel that this morning, and I hope that you will join us afterwards downstairs for a light lunch as we fellowship together. Please hear this call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us greet this day with thanks on our lips and hope in our hearts. Let us make a joyful noise to our Creator. Sing to the world a new song, lift glad praises to the Lord, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. I invite you to stand if you are able and sing with us our call to worship we will glorify. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords. Great I am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who Lord of all the universe, all praise to Him we give. Oh, hallelujah to the King of Kings, hallelujah to the Lamb, hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the great. Please remain standing while we pray. Father, we commit to you this day, this day that even as the weather is changing and circumstances of our life are changing and it seems we try to get a foothold on what is true and what is good. May we be reminded that you never change, that you were the same yesterday, yesterday today, and forevermore. Lord Jesus Christ, we commit to you our hearts and our minds. We ask that you penetrate them so that we may be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we give you permission to do that. We give you permission to um, fill us with the knowledge that can only come from your Holy Spirit. And as your Holy Spirit moves us, and propels us into action. Lord, may we have on our hearts and minds that whatever we do, we may do for your glory. Lord, this morning as we listen to your word and as we learn from it, may it not just be head knowledge for us. May it be something that moves into our hearts and stirs us into the action prompted by your Holy Spirit. We want to be able to have a sense of you working in our lives even as we stand and sit here worshiping you. And we want to have an idea of what it means to do your will beyond these walls. So we thank you for the mission field that is there in our families, in our friends, in the greater Portland area. And we ask that you would be um, walking with us as we declare your majesty 
your glory, and we make your name known. We pray all of these things in Christ who lives and reigns in unity with you and the Holy Spirit. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Our first scripture today comes from Isaiah 40. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary, and he increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. May we hear it in our hearts this morning. And now I invite our ushers to come forward to receive our morning offering as we pray and bless you. Gracious God, we thank you for the blessings that we have been given. We thank you for the blessings that rain down on us like the storms that have passed over us this past day. If we but look in our hearts, we will find that we have so much to be grateful for that, in fact, our cup overflows. And so, Lord, help us to see with eyes of gratitude. Not see what we have left behind, not see what we might have missed, but to see all that we have, all that you have given to us. And, Lord, as we receive today's offering, we ask that it be blessed as well. We ask that this offering be given with a spirit of generosity and gratitude. We ask that the money that is received go to the good works of this place to keep it a beacon of hope for all those who are in need of your hope. That it continue the ministry that has touched so many lives. We pray this in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Now I invite our children, if there are any other children around, to come forward. Hey guys, you can have a seat. I just want to talk to you today about hope. Have you ever heard that word hope? Yeah, what does it mean? hard to describe, right? Hard. Now, when you hope for something, do you hope for something in the past or do you hope for something in the future? The future. What do you think, Brayden? Do you hope for something in the past or something in the future? The future. Now, is there something you guys are hoping for? Hmm. 
Anything that you're looking forward to? Have you ever, is there something you, uh, is there someplace maybe you want to go? Something you want to do? No? You guys have no hopes? You're just, you're just floating along, just living in the present. I like that. That's good. Well, when I was a kid, I, would, I always wanted to go to Disneyland. That was always my biggest hope. Always was hoping. And you know what? Sometimes when we hope for something, it's kind of like time travel. Because what we hope for and the, it gives us, what we hope for makes us excited, right? Have you ever gotten excited about something that you're, that you're going to do or a place you're going to go? Or maybe something that you are, that's, that's coming up, like in school or a special day, and you hope for it, and it gets you excited just for hoping. Well, Jesus came, and he, when he, Jesus came, he was trying to tell everyone that they needed to have hope for a better future. And he was teaching them that they could put their hope in him because he was giving them a better way to live. Do you believe that? Yeah, because people were living and they were really upset by, they thought, thought that their sins were weighing them down. And Jesus said, I'm going to take away all of these sins so that you can then hope for a better life if you just believe in me. And you know what? That's true even today. If we feel like something is weighing us down, if we feel like, something, if we feel like we've done something wrong, we can give it to Jesus. And Jesus will take it. And then that leads us to hope for a happier future. Let's have, let's have a prayer. Jesus, we thank you for this gift of hope. We thank you that no matter how hard things are for our lives, we know that you are in control. And if we put our hope in you, you will give us a better future. We thank you for bringing this future to our present now and helping us to live in hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we can go again. Thanks, Chris. I would like for us to do something very, very biblical before we continue in our worship this morning and before we sing our next songs. I would like you to take your right hand like this, and I want to take your left hand like this, and I want you to put them together. Then I want you to pull them apart, and I want you to put them together again. Scripture says people clap their hands, and I said on our bio, on our website, that I'm going to teach our congregation to clap on two and on four. So I'm going to do two things at one time because I'm ambidextrous. I am going to count and clap at the same time. You just have to clap. So when I do two and when I do four, you go ahead and clap. You ready for this? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You guys are so quick at learning. All right, ready? We're going to keep this going. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, and give!
Amen. Hope is here. Amen. Hope is here. Jesus is here. Hope is here. God is with us. Our scripture today is just one verse. Romans 15 verse 13. And as we think about the importance of today, I think it's a very important verse of scripture. Here's what it says. Romans 15 verse 13. May the God of hope Everybody say that word, hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Let's pray. Dear God, we are so grateful today that you've brought us together. We are grateful that there is truly hope available in you. Dear God, Today, in this moment, we pray for hope, for the hopeless. We pray for those who are struggling with paying their bills. We pray for those who are struggling with illness. We pray for those who are struggling, waiting for a diagnosis. Dear God, we pray for those who are struggling with addiction. We pray for those who are fighting to keep their marriage together. We pray for those who are fighting to reconcile friendships. We pray 
that you, the God of hope, would fill us all with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may abound in hope, as the scripture says. And, we all, and may we all sense today that hope is here. May nobody walk from this place hopeless. May nobody go from this time unaware that they are loved dearly by you, the creator of all people and all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I am so glad to welcome everyone to First Baptist Church on this Back to Church Sunday. Whether you're joining us online or in person or through our CD ministry a little bit later on. Um, and before we go any further in the service, for those who are gathered with us in person, uh, we have something special after the service. There will be uh, lunch. Um, so if you're able to join us, if you're interested in joining us for that, you're welcome to do so. And we have some special uh, kind of giveaways going on down there. We're just glad that you're here today, whether you're a visitor or a longtime part of this church. It doesn't matter either way. We would like to invite you to pull out one of these visitor cards around you. Um, if you don't have one around you, um, just raise your hand. One of our ushers could help you with that, or you could grab one on the way out. But just fill that out, put your name on it, and uh, some contact info, certainly a way that we can contact you if you uh, win a prize, if you win one of the, the items that we have, and we would love to, uh, to give that to you. So we're glad you're here. Fill out a card, and uh, there'll be a place to deposit these downstairs. So I'm glad that you're all here. Are you glad to be here today? Anybody? Let's try that again. Are you glad to be at church today? Amen. And I'm really glad you're here. Because today there are churches all over the country who are making an intentional effort to invite their communities to join them for worship. Coming off of a year when many churches have not been able to worship in person the way that they would like to, and that includes us, an invitation to get back to church is a really powerful and important opportunity. You see, the church is made up of its people. It's not just about this amazing building that we're in right now. It's about a collection of imperfect individuals who have trusted Jesus with their lives and who choose to support one another along their journey, along their path. In fact, that's what our mission here at First Baptist Church is all about. We are everyday people looking up to God for meaning in life, reaching out across cultural boundaries with the hope of Jesus, raising up a generation in the way of Jesus, living as family, different though we may be, and serving together for the good of others. On a day like today, when we think about what the church really is, I like to focus on the fourth line of that statement, living as family, different though we may be. Take a moment, look around you. Look at the people around you. There are all sorts of different people, and I bet you anything, you don't know every single one of them. Amen? We come from all over this city. We are different generations, different cultures. We have different experiences and so on. And yet, as in any family, different though we may be, we're still family, amen? And whether we like it or not, we all need family sometimes. And when we come together like this, we find hope. We find a hope that empowers us to overcome anything that life can throw at us. So I wanna say welcome, welcome to church today. You are part of something bigger than yourself, and you are here for a reason. God has a plan for your life, and today is a part of that plan. Those of you who know me know that I like to have a big idea when we look at the Bible together. If you remember nothing else about the message, if you remember nothing else about going to First Baptist Church on the 19th of September 2021, I hope you will remember this our big idea, which is simply that hope is here. Say it with me. Hope is here. That's the big idea. Hope is here. I would argue that 
the greatest need we have in our lives after the year and a half we have experienced is a sense that there is hope in the world. Amen? Anybody need hope today? Some of us have experienced great loss this year, and it's been troubling. Just the other day, in fact, I learned of a friend who lost a loved one to this COVID-19. I wonder how many of you have been impacted like that. So many of us have been touched in one way or another by this terrible pandemic. Not only that, but there continues to be turmoil and unrest around the globe. If we are already people of faith, this year has caused some of us to doubt our faith and the things that we hold to tightly. Some of us feel broken because of the pain in our country and in our world. And no matter where we're coming from, can't we just all agree that this world is in need of hope? It reminds me of my beavers, the beavers. They haven't always been that great. <laughs> They've had troubles over the years, especially last year. But last week, they won their first game of the year against Hawaii. And yesterday, they won 42 to zero. Things are looking up. And if you're a true fan of any particular team and any particular sport, especially the underdog, you keep rooting for them against all odds, amen? You go for your team. Why? Because a true fan says that there's always hope, amen? There's always hope. That, that's one way to look at the challenges in life. There's always hope. The church throughout history has had the audacity to have hope in the face of trouble. It comes from the victory of the resurrected Jesus Christ when things looked the darkest for Jesus as he hung on the cross. He knew that it was far from over. The tomb would not be the end. He would defeat death and come back to life. This is the church's firm foundation. And because of it, there is always reason for hope. During his ministry, Jesus was always offering hope to the people he encountered. Do you realize that? Jesus was always offering hope to the people he ran into, whether it was a terrible disease, a terrible government, uh, physical or spiritual hunger, some kind of evil attack, whatever it might be going on in somebody's life, Jesus would meet people right where they were at. The people knew that if Jesus is around, then hope is here. He met them where they're at. And I believe that Jesus still does that today. Which brings us to our first point which is that Jesus is aware that life is tough for us. Any of you agree that life is difficult sometimes? Jesus knows that. He's aware that life is tough for us. There are times when we're in need of a reminder that there's hope. Life's circumstances have a way of leaving us hopeless, and I would argue that there is nothing in life that can steal our hope more than when we find ourselves weary, tired, or worn out. And I would imagine that many of you in this room or online today know exactly what this feels like. Waiting for a diagnosis, struggling to pay off some bill, trying to save a marriage that is at risk, enduring this doggone pandemic that we're all so tired of, all while you're trying to grow spiritually. It can be difficult, right? It can be really tough. Have you ever felt worn out? I mean, really worn out? It's times like that when we feel like we can't keep going and all we want to do is just give up, just move on. Well, let me tell you something. Jesus was aware of the tendency of people to shoulder heavy burdens and lose hope because of it. He spoke to his followers about John the Baptist's faithfulness in the midst of prison and the questions he was asking about Jesus' identity. John was losing hope about whether or not Jesus really was the Messiah and if his work had been in vain. John wondered, why have I been doing all this stuff? I don't even know for sure if Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. 
And in the light of this, Jesus speaks these words in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Some of you may know these words. Jesus says to people back then, and I believe to people today, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. Anybody else heavy laden today? Jesus says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's a promise. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is doing a couple of things, two things I want to talk about in this passage. First, he is acknowledging that life is tough. Life is heavy. We, we live life sometimes without boundaries. We're hard on ourselves because the grass is always greener on the other side. We work hard to keep up with others until it just about kills us. Jesus is acknowledging that this is the way of life. Like, this is a normal experience for human beings. That we shouldn't feel bad when we feel crushed by our burdens. We shouldn't feel like failures. When we do, we often shy away from going to God for help. And we avoid being vulnerable for others as well. Because Jesus, but Jesus, you see, tells us that if we are weary, we should what? Come to him. Folks, it's an invitation. But the question is, will you take the invitation? Second, Jesus offers us a solution. He tells us to exchange our yoke for another. What's a yoke? Well, it's not the yellow thing that was on my breakfast plate this morning. It's not part of the egg. Different kind of yoke. Y-O-K-E, yoke. Well, a yoke is a wooden harness that a farmer would attach to oxen so they could plow a field or pull a cart. The yoke would help keep the livestock safe as they worked, and it would help the animals to submit to the farmer. There were some people in Jesus' audience, the original audience, who were submitting to a way of life, listen, that was just about impossible to live up to. It was religious, and it was legalistic. It was performance-based and driven by the need to succeed. But the yoke of Jesus, the yoke that Jesus was offering, was one of grace, of mercy, of compassion, of love. One yoke causes people to become weary. The other causes people to find peace. Both imply work, though, don't they, right? It's not like by going to Jesus, hey, everything's going to be easy. I'm never going to work. I'm never going to do anything. It's retirement time. I'm on vacation for the rest of my life. No, there is work to be done, but a different kind of work. And so Jesus invites us to remove whatever yokes we have around our necks and to place his yoke upon us because it is easy, it is light, and it will give us rest. And that's the second point today that Jesus invites us to exchange a burden that is overwhelming for one that is life-giving, though sometimes difficult. Jesus offers hope for the weary by reminding us that our value is not found in how well we hold it together when things get tough or how we compare to the people around us. Our value, folks, comes from the love that God has for us and the grace he gives I remember a difficult time in my life. I was in seminary full time. Lisa, my wife, and I had just two kids at that time. And for those who don't know us well, we have four now. But having even one kid is a lot of work. Amen? Anybody speak from experience? It's a lot of work. But we had two kids. And not only that, though, Lisa was running an in-home business, and I was working full time, actually downtown here. Uh, in a totally different setting. But I was working full-time, and it may sound strange, but, um, well, first of all, it was a bit much. <laughs> it was too much going on in our lives. But what may sound strange to you is that even though I was learning about Jesus all the time in seminary, I was really struggling to find any time to grow in my personal relationship with him. 
work and school were just beginning to really suck all the life out of me. I wonder if anybody's in a, been in a situation like that where you just got so much going on. It's just like life is just, <laughs> it's just like sucking everything out of you. You just have no energy left. You feel like you can't do anything. And so I was becoming weary and heavy laden until one day I came to the realization that it was okay to slow down a little bit, that it was okay to take a little bit longer to finish my degree, that it was okay to, you know, there's that button on the side of your cell phone. You can turn that thing off, right? I learned that. I figured that out. And I let things go to voicemail so that I could spend time with my family, but also with the God who loved me and who I was working so hard to serve. And I felt this weight just lift off of my shoulders, and I began to experience true growth in my relationship with God. I traded my yoke of seemingly unending work for the yoke of love and God's presence in my life. If you find yourself weary today, whether because of circumstances you cannot control or situations that you are responsible for, I want to offer you hope today. I want to offer you hope for a better tomorrow, hope for true purpose, hope for a new beginning, hope for peace and rest. And I tell you what, it is found in this person called Jesus. Because when Jesus is here, hope is here. What's interesting about Jesus' illustration about a yoke is that a wooden yoke would not be typically worn by a single cow. It would have been in tandem or in pair with a second cow, right? They would work together to pull and to plow the field. Well, the reason that Back to Church Sunday is such an important concept is that we find hope, I think, when we recognize that we don't have to do life alone. We don't have to do everything all by ourselves. The rest that we find in Jesus is best experienced alongside other people. Which brings us to our third and final point today, which is that number three, in the church, we help each other carry our burdens. I wonder if anyone here needs help carrying your burden today. Years after Jesus spoke the words that we just read, the Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Galatia about the importance of living in community with one another. He made his comments in the light of the struggle that it is to live a good life, but he makes a statement that when lived out puts us in line with the invitation of Jesus to live his way. Here's what Paul said in Galatians 6 verse 2. He says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. To live in line with the way of Jesus is to be willing to meet the needs of others. It's not just about me. It's about this family, these other people. You know, in a family, I as the dad can't show up at home and say, hey, I, you know, I'm tired. I don't want to you know, work on paying the bills. I don't want to mow the lawn. I don't want to do anything. I'm just going to rest. Lisa, you take care of everything. If I did that, Lisa would have words for me, right? Likewise, if one of my kids said, hey, Dad, you know, um, I, I just don't want to do the dishes anymore. I'm, just, I'm kind of done with that. I'm retiring, right? It doesn't work. In a family, we share the burden. We work together. We're a team. We bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And so when we see someone else in church who is weary or who is burdened, we come to their aid with joy because it is in so doing that we offer hope to them. Burdens come in all shapes and sizes, by the way. Some burdens are ones that we bring upon ourselves. <laughs> But instead of judging or criticizing people in that situation, we can help shoulder those burdens by offering grace, forgiveness, and a willingness to help navigate a better way. Some burdens happen to us and have nothing to do with our choosing. A divorce that we didn't ask for, a sickness that was unexpected, a job loss that's devastating. In these instances, we carry each other's burdens in the church. This is what the church is about, people. By offering a listening ear, by bringing a meal, 
by hanging out downstairs after church and getting to know one another, by chatting on Facebook, whatever the case may be. These are the ways that we can share those burdens. Can you believe (laughs) that we have been living through this pandemic situation for one and a half years now? Can you believe that? You know, when this all started, I figured, oh, you know, a couple months, this thing will blow over. No. (laughs) I, I remember the second week of March 2020. Anybody able to remember back that far? Oh, my goodness, what a week that was. Oh, boy. When it was all starting, right? As many of you know, our drop-in center provides hundreds of meals to the most vulnerable members of our community each and every week. Not only that, but they give emergency um, food supplies to those who are in most need. Well, back in those days, that second week of March, back then, when we were all just starting to learn what COVID-19 was, why face masks might be a thing that you would wear. And look at you, you're all wearing them now, and I will in a moment too. When we were all learning this term, social distancing, for the first time, some of us at First Baptist Church, to be totally honest, we were pretty concerned that we would have to shut the drop-in center down. We didn't know what would happen. Nobody knew what to do, and that included us. But rather than shut it down, Our church came together like it never had before. Our team almost immediately changed protocols, serving the meal on the street, like we did just last week, in fact. And we took steps to be careful in the food preparation and how we served. And because of their faithfulness and the careful way in which they did their work, Not a single member of our team has been affected personally by the virus, which I think is pretty amazing when you consider all the people that we serve each week. Amen? That's an amazing thing. That is a blessing from God. And I'm under no illusions that we're going to, you know, have no problems with this, that nothing could happen to us or whatever. But I tell you what, God has protected us. God has helped us. God has empowered us this entire time. On top of that, we've been able to offer three vaccine clinics so far in partnership with some of the authorities in our, in, our, in, our, um, in our area here. And not only have we been able to serve a meal and meet these practical needs, but we have been able to pray with people, to give Bibles away, and to talk to people about Jesus so many times that we couldn't even count them all. Well, what is it? that should be said about every one of the churches who are taking part in Back to Church Sunday today? Well, that wherever there is a lack of hope in the community, the church is here to carry the burden. We are here to help, folks. We are not designed to be some kind of country club for saints. We are a hospital for sinners. Amen? We are a place where people look for the Lord, where they look for help, and it's not always easy. You know, sometimes we'd like to kick up our feet and just relax, but when we learn that there's a need that someone needs help, that's what the church is about. Here is the good news, that when we love one another in this way, we fulfill the most basic thing that Jesus required. We fulfill the law of Christ, as Paul referred to it. We love God with our whole heart, and we in turn love our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus said all the law and the prophets hung on these two things. Well, that sounds like hope to me. A hope that no matter where we find ourselves today, Jesus offers us rest and peace. And we don't have to do it alone as we truly love one another in the way he envisioned. Hope is here, folks. Hope is to be found in Jesus. Hope is being shared by this church each and every week. So let me ask you a question. Are you tired? Are you weary today? Are you burdened by life? Then come to Jesus and find rest. You don't have to do this life alone anymore. Remember that here at First Baptist Church, we don't throw away the term church family lightly. 
that really is what we seek to be, a community where all sorts of different people who all need hope are living as family, different though we may be. We're in this together, and that's what gives us hope. And so as Romans 15, 13 says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. You know, many of you listening to me today have already found that abundant hope in Jesus the moment you believed in him and accepted the free gift of salvation, the assurance of a relationship with God uh, now and the eternal life in heaven after you die. But there may be somebody listening right now, online or in person, who is still looking for that hope. And if that's you, can I just say that I'm really glad you're here or I'm really glad you're watching or that you're listening. So if hope is here, how do you connect with that kind of hope? Well, you know, I believe that God created each and every one of us in his own image to enjoy a perfect relationship with our creator. But I also know... (laughs) That according to the Bible, we, human beings, messed up this perfection. When we turned our backs on God, when instead of doing what God asked of us, we let go of his caring hand, choosing our way instead. People still do this every single day. Instead of doing the right thing, they do what the Bible calls sin. Instead of love, they hate or cause harm. You see it playing out every single day as human beings continue to harm one another, as sin and sadness continue to trouble our fallen, imperfect world. But even when we had no way of getting back to God, God came down to us. As the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Eternal life. Eternal life. The true hope of the world. The true hope of the world. Jesus walked among us, showed us the way, and even died in our place. He paid the penalty of our sins. Why? So that we, all of us, who are imperfect, could have a perfect relationship with a perfect God. When Jesus is here, hope is here. And he's so close to us. It's like he's reaching out his hand so that you could grab onto it. But how do you grab onto God's hand? How do you grab on when hope is here? Just like John 3.16 says, you believe. You turn away from any other false notion of how to connect with God, and you turn instead to Jesus, the true hope of the world. And when you do that, you connect with God. And guess what? God never, and I mean never, lets you go. Why? Well, quite simply because he loves you that much. But he doesn't want to leave you there. God meets us where we're at, whether times are good, whether we've got our act pretty much together, or whether we're in the gutter of life. But he wants us to grow. He wants to help us to become the people that he has created us to be. And you know what? I believe that happens in the context of the local church. I believe that happens when we bear one another's burdens, when we encourage one another, when we help each other, when we find that there's a need, and when we really exist and live as a family. Do you need to recognize that hope is here today? And believe in Jesus for the first time? Do you need to make that commitment public and express a desire to follow him in baptism? Getting dunked in that tank back there. It's not a dunk tank. We don't throw, you know, the baseballs at it or anything. Although that would be fun, I think, maybe. Maybe you're interested in becoming a member of this church. Maybe you want to recommit your life to God or simply come forward for prayer. Whatever your case may be, I invite you to do that in just a moment. I'll be down here on the main floor if you'd like to uh, talk, if you'd like to pray um, as we sing our closing song. And don't forget, we'd love to have you join us for lunch downstairs. May God bless you. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to be together. 
Lord, for the one who is listening maybe online right now or through a CD that's being mailed or who is even in this room with me now, the one who needs hope. Lord, I ask that you would help them to respond to you. Dear God, I ask that you would help them to connect with you, to believe in you. And my friends, if that is your situation right now, if you need to connect with God for the first time, if you need to believe in Jesus, you can do so by basically telling him you're ready to do that. If you need help with that, you can repeat this prayer in your own heart silently right where you're at, whether in this room or online somewhere. You can say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again on the third day. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. I ask that you would help me to live for you. Help me to grow. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you for not letting me go. Help me to live for you. Amen. Let's stand. As we go this morning, may I give you this benediction from Scripture. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure or right, whatever is lovely or admirable, anything, anything that is excellent and praiseworthy, think on such things. And may that be the impetus and the mark that propels you forward this week in Christ Jesus. And all God's people said... Greet somebody that you don't know. Have a good week.